Hi, Shane from DIY Retro Arcade. Today I'm going to show you how to hook up a LED harness uh, to our Easy Family uh, PCB board uh, that we uh, released. I'm going to show you on the board here to hook up. I'm going to show you on this unpopulated board so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, to hook this up, you'll, you'll basically hook your uh, LED harness into the 12 volt out and then you'll need to hook a power switch into the 12 volt accessory switch. That's the only two that you need to hook up. You can do uh, this in one of two ways. You can use a cable like this, uh, which will require no cutting or anything. Uh, this will give you a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter barrel out. You can easily just simply plug this into the board and then plug this one into your LED harness and it'll work. Uh, or you can splice it in using one of the jumpers like this right here. Uh, on my install today, I'm going to use a jumper. Uh, there'll be less cable and it's a little bit cleaner install. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. The way I'm going to do mine is I'm going to take one of these LED harnesses right here and I'm going to actually separate the wire colors I'm gonna cut the uh, I'm gonna cut this end off right here so that I end up with two actual harnesses I'm gonna cut it right here and then I'm gonna take and separate the colors so I'll have two wire harnesses at this point I'll have a black and a red on your buttons. Let me actually go grab one off the shelf. Okay, on our one piece buttons, the power will plug into the outside. I don't know if you can see it here, but on the actual plastic, you'll have a marking that says plus and minus and has an arrow pointing to the terminal. But like I said, you'll, you'll plug them in on these two outer ones and put the red to the plus put the black to the minus. So with the way I'm doing mine, the best way to do it is find the actual end somewhere here, the actual end, and then just start jumping them. So the minus is on the outside. So let's hook all the minuses up first. And you kind of want to think how you're going to do this and do it as short jumps as possible. You don't want to jump all over the place. The LED harnesses, for the most part, they're set up for, I believe, 18 buttons or 16 buttons. So you don't have a whole lot of extra. And all I'm doing is going terminal to terminal. you may want to go ahead and just pull this on through the one I'm using is actually a longer one it's actually I think a 32 32 button so it's going to have a whole lot of extra terminal we'll just cut those off at the end Unfortunately, my eyes are not the best. Now, whenever you're you're going distance, it doesn't hurt to leave blank ones. So, like you're going to have a dead one right there, which is no big deal. And 
And this also goes back to on the original install where I suggested that you turn all the buttons the same. That way you can do this just like I'm doing. You don't really have to look at each button. They're all the same. They're all turned the same. So it makes the install of stuff like this uh, a whole lot faster. I'm actually going to pause the video right now and go ahead and plug the rest of these in. I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me do this for five minutes. But I'll be right back. Okay, actually, I thought of a better way to do this. Uh, I unplugged the the one on this one, so I went uh, here, 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 and then actually I jumped across to right here, 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 that one, that one, and then this will end up right here. The way I, the reason I did that is because then your your last one. We'll plug in right here, your last ground. We'll plug in right here. And then this right here will actually end over this. Depending on how your bud setup is, um, will determine how you have to run this. Kind of think it out before you start pushing them down because these things are pretty hard to get off the buttons once you once you lock them in. But what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the the last red one and again, stick it on the, the first terminal here, just like we did. And then I'm gonna run the same route. And I'm gonna pause the camera again, because again, you don't need to see me push every one of these down. Okay, I have all of these wires ran. Again, I did the same pattern with the red and I ran it all the way around and I ended up over here in the corner with the black wire. I just cut the ends off and make them a little shorter with the two wires. Now, if you were using, if you elected to keep the barrel connection, this barrel connection on your, uh, on your harness, then all you would need to do is, where is my cable? Oh, there it is. Is simply take this one, plug it into the 12 volt out, and then of course, you know, plug that in, and then plug it in right there, and then plug your switch in to the to the switch portion. But what we're going to do is, like I said again, I don't like massive clumps of wires, so I always try to do the shortest, cleanest route. So what we'll do is, we'll simply cut that. Cut that, and then take this and simply strip it back. Actually, give yourself a little more. Strip it back. And take the red. Strip it back, and then take one of your jumper wires for your buttons. And we need this end right here. So I'll just take and cut that. Actually, I'm going to cut a little more off of that. We'll cut that to right there. And then simply strip it. Then all you want to do is take uh, whatever connector you're using to splice them together with. I always use the uh, alarm terminals. They're quick and easy. And these things hold extremely, extremely well. And like I said, all it is is a uh, all it is is a terminal for security systems. Simply take this wire right here, 
and plug it into the 12 volt out one which is right there you may want to take and tape these up anyone that are that are laying free you may want to tape them up it's up to you it just depends on depends on how clean you want it it's better to do it anyway that way they don't actually touch and short out And then once you get that done, all you need to do is hook in your actual power switch. You need to use a latching switch so that the power stays on all the time. Uh, where you can actually, where it actually locks in. I'm trying to find my switch. It's here somewhere. There it is. And just use any kind of latching switch. It has to be one that stays down. The switch, it doesn't matter. Uh, it'll just be a little two-wire switch. It doesn't matter if uh, which side the black and the reds on it's just the continuity switch we we do sell these little switches on the website as well and all you'll do is plug it into this one right here that says um, 12 volt accessory switch and, and again your LED harness will plug in here you can also hook your marquee in to say the one below it and the one switch will power them both but all you'll need to do is simply plug this in and then you'll need to use like a splitter in the cabinet to send power to the actual board again this isn't powered through anything it's a separate little section but just take it right here and plug in 12 volts and then when you have the power button press it the lights will come on simple as that and that gives you a on off button for marquees buttons whatever you need through this uh, PCB I'll actually uh, let me set this actually inside the cabinet and we'll wire it back up and I'll show you how I split off the power to, to get to it all right guys let's talk power one thing that I can highly suggest if you are installing uh, a Pandora's box family is not to use the standard uh, 3 amp power supply that comes with it. It's just simply not enough power. Uh, you need to really use a 5 amp one. That is the best uh, to ensure that you have enough power. The easiest way to hook all this stuff up is to use a three-way splitter like these right here. And let me warn you ahead of time that um, some of the Pandoras have a three point, excuse me, a 5.5 by 2.1 connection, and some have a 5.5 by 2.5 connection. And if that is the case, depending on which one you have, again, it just varies. It's like they just use whatever they have. You'll need an adapter like this. Also, uh, our connector on the back of the board is also a 2.5. So you'll need to use this adapter on it as well. I'm going to try to order in some um, some some cables that will make it so you don't have to use the adapter. But for, for now, this is all I have. So all you'll need to do is um, hook this one into the back of the arcade one up where it stubs in, just like it like the factory one does. And then directly hook this power, uh, this, excuse me, this splitter into it. And then you'll hook this directly into the Pandora. And again, you may have to use one of these adapters. It just depends on your Pandora. Uh, even if you get them from us, again, some of them have the 2.5, some of them have the 2.1. Uh, but plug that into the Pandora. And then take one of the extensions and hook, hook it in and run it up to the LCD driver. And then take your final one and run it up to the uh, to our PCB on the back of your uh, control panel for the power. So let's go ahead and plug plug in the one cable that we need to. This is our board all hooked up and wired in. The only wire that we now have floating is this switch right here that we installed on the J panel. This is the moment. Excuse me, the latching switch to operate the LED buttons. And all you need to do is simply plug it in to where it says 12 volt accessory switch. Simply plug in there and you're done. So now when you push that, it will basically power on all of the buttons. And then for the power, again, all you'll want to do is take an extension 
and hook into it. And it. Let's plug into the back of the board. Like so. And then just drop the cable down inside here. And then flip back down your CPO. And it looks just like that. All right, I'm going to kind of hold this by hand and show you what I've done. Uh, these two cables right here that have come down, these are the extensions that are on the front panel and on your LCD driver. Uh, again, I'm using a three-way splitter. I have those running up, and then I have the other leg plugged directly into the Pandora. And then you'll take your, your female portion of the connector and simply plug it into the power supply that you have feeding in from the back of the... Uh, arcade one up just like you normally always do and let's plug this thing all in and I'll power it all on and show you everything works all right everything is together plugged in the one good thing about our board is that it's all on a separate power switch again you can you can play the game with no LED buttons no marquee on or you can turn them off and on just simply use the button and all the LEDs light up so if you like leaving them on during gameplay, leave them on. If you don't, you don't have to. You can turn the game on, and again, they don't light up until you push the button. And again, these things are always slow to boot up. <laughs> Back on. And there you have it.